Blessings to all. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. May the Lord God give you wisdom, understanding, um, insight, revelation, knowledge through this minister, ministering, as I should say that, ministering. And so what I'm about to talk about is very important, a very critical component in the believer's life. And that is to be blameless. What it means to be blameless. Blameless means it's describing to be perfect. What Jesus commanded in Matthew 5. To be perfect for the Lord your God in heaven is perfect. And it's, most people or professed believers will get that confused. They will get them confused and say, oh, nobody's perfect. You hear a lot, I hear a lot of unbelievers say that. I'm pretty sure you have too. Nobody's perfect, and but yet they 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 use that as an excuse to excuse them to excuse the sin in their lifestyle. Nobody's perfect. Well, Jesus says this to the rich young ruler: "There is none that does good, no, not one." He told that to the rich young ruler. The ruler thought he was perfect, but yet he lacked. He lacked the. He lacked uh, um, the true riches. He lacked the love of God. And he did not want to obey. He did not want to follow Jesus because Jesus told him, um, well, you heard the commandments. You shall not murder. You should not steal. You should honor your mother and your father. He took him to the commandments and Jesus told him also, you, there's one thing that you lack. Go sell all your possessions and give to the poor. If you, He says, if you want to be perfect, he didn't mention that. If you be perfect, if you want to be perfect, go sell all your possessions. Give all that you have and sell to the poor. Pick up your cross and you will have eternal life. You will have treasure in heaven. You know, the rich young ruler, he walked away sorrowfully. So he did not enter in. He did not. Uh, took the grace that was given the mercy of the Lord that was given presented before him and so what it means to be blameless like I said it describes being perfect we are striving in perfection of holiness um, many people that come to mind in the word of God you have Jesus most of all then you have the prophet Daniel, and then you have Joseph in Genesis. And so I want to look at Daniel chapter 1 and chapter 6, um, describing the perfection of believing in the one who gave you life and put breath in your lungs. It is God who is in control, who has given you life and put breath in your lungs. And so you must consider that you are created in the image of God for a purpose. You are created for his purpose. And so in Daniel chapter 1, let me see where I'm going to start at. Because it's, it's many things that got mentioned that describes the perfection and the blameless, the blamelessness. I don't know if I can use that word. The blamelessness of the spirit, the excellent spirit that was on Daniel. And so, it's, I'm going to start off right here in uh, verse 8 of Daniel chapter 1. It says, Daniel, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself um, with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So Daniel was, he was, his work ethic was in the perfection as blameless. His work ethic before the king of Babylon, the king noticed that there's something different about these Hebrew men. Daniel, uh, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, who was also given the name change, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And Daniel's name got changed as well. But he, Daniel real, uh, recognized how the king's men were eating. They were defiling themselves. And the spirit of God that was on Daniel 
gave him clear discernment and wisdom. Say, hey, these men are defying themselves. They're drinking wine. They're eating the meat. And it kind of remind me of the children of Israel in the book of Numbers chapter 11. When he's in it, where it says they lusted after the meat of Egypt. And they desired the meat of Egypt. And this kindled the Lord's frustration on them. And so, when you are in modern day time, in modern day time, as a true born again Christian is not, is written, I think it's in Ecclesiastes, about it's not wise to look or consider the days that were of the past, as I paraphrase that verse, because I know that's in Ecclesiastes. So if your heart is on the things that you know that you were defiled in, that you would entangle yourself in, it's going to defile you, it's going to curse you. God sees, he's looking, he judges the, the inward man, the not the appearance, but the heart. And so Daniel, it says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor with the ten, with and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs, verse 10, said to Daniel, I fear my lord, the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse liken than the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs and has set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove your servants, I beseech you, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Now, in the modern day churches, or you will, people who go on a fast, Christians who go on a fast, and we'll call that a Daniel's fast, where they just, just eating vegetables, eating pulse, that's what what's was talking about, pulse and Fruits and vegetables and drinking water. Did it say drinking water? Yep, water to drink. Praise God. Pulse to eat and water to drink. These are natural. These are purity. The purity. That was the mindset of Daniel. He was concerned about the purity of not defiling himself. And those who put their hope in Christ Jesus purifies himself just as he is pure. That's what it says in 1 John. So... Daniel, he was wise. He was uh, blameless in his work ethic as a man of God. So that's why God blessed him and his uh, brethren, Meshach, Azariah, and, and, uh, and Hananiah, who was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He blessed them. He, there, let me see, in verse 15 it says, And at the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. So the way the, the, uh, the king's meat and them that ate that, the king's meat in their portion, they were eating for the wrong reasons. They was defiling themselves. Of course, there was sin on them. And... Yet the Hebrew men, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, um, there was concern. They were men of God after God's own heart, like King David, and God promoted them, and had and there was favor found in the eyes of the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, and so he promoted them, and so King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He needed explanation on what what his dream meant and there was magicians there was uh wizards and sorcerers who could not expound or explain his dream and so there was daniel god gave daniel wisdom and discernment to explain king nebuchadnezzar's dream now this is the perfection of the lord god of the excellent spirit that was on uh, Daniel. Daniel was perfect. Um, just like 
Job, who the Lord called perfect, perfect and blameless. You know, the, you know, the accuser of the brethren, of the brethren, the devil, that's his job. To, he's the uh, accuser of the brethren. We're going to take a look at that later on in this video. We're going to talk about that. The accuser of the brethren. We have those who find fault, was trying to find fault in Daniel. That's why we're going to Daniel chapter 6. Um, moving right along as far as like what Daniel and the Hebrew boys, the Hebrew men did because they went through the fire, they was tossing the fiery furnace and yet Jesus was in there with them and since they was blameless they chose to obey the Lord and not bow their heads to King Nebuchadnezzar's golden statue they uh, there was released, there was no no Clothes was burnt. There was their skin wasn't burnt. They wasn't tormented or anything like that. They was in the will of God, and Jesus was in there with them, and then they came out. And yet King Nebuchadnezzar did not, still didn't find no fault because he was lifted up in pride. The Word of God says his mind was hardened. His mind was hardened, and so that's why you know King Nebuchadnezzar. Had that had another dream, Daniel interpreted. And so the Lord humbled King Nebuchadnezzar. Would you rather the Lord humble you or will you humble yourself? The word of God says in James that he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So the Lord humbled King Nebuchadnezzar because it says his mind was hearted. And also lifted up in pride. So that's why he had a statue of himself, which also breaks the first commandment to have, no, the second commandment, to have no other gods, gods before me, no image of anything on heaven, on earth, and either under the water or beneath the earth. And that was that was the second commandment broken. So King Nebuchadnezzar got lifted up in pride, and he was wicked in his heart as well. Uh, in Daniel chapter 6, it, it says it pleased Darius. Now, Darius was, uh, was the ruler um, in, the, in that kingdom. It pleased Darius to send over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these uh, three presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts to them and the king should have no damage. Then this day was preferred, preferred above the presidents and princes because of the excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Now, this is also describing the blamelessness, the perfection, the excellent spirit of Daniel. Why was a law written against uh, Daniel? Because, uh, well, against those who want to pray after the gods. This stirred up, the, the work ethic that stirred up jealousy and envy to the presidents and princes that was in the uh, the eyes of, the, of King Darius. And so, then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel. There was jealous, there was jealous um, concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion nor fault. That's the key word. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. They try to do, they try to set up a law, they try to, they, they manipulated uh, Darius to write a law that anyone who uh, prays to a God um, will be tossed in the lion's den. The lion's den. And so, did Daniel... Daniel heard it, who heard about it. Did he yield to the, that law, that new law? No, he didn't. The Lord God is ruler of all things. He is Lord of heaven and earth, King of kings, Lord of lords. And there are many testimonies. Well, there's only a few testimonies as recorded in the Bible that the Lord did for Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And he did not yield to that law, but yet he sought the Lord concerning the matter. He sought the Lord day and night. He prayed to the Lord three times a day. And then the presidents and princes saw that. And they wanted to bring, they wanted to bring, they tried to find fault. He could not find none, the word of God says. 
thing. So Darius find out. They got it got word got to uh, Darius about Daniel seeking God, and so Darius was manipulated, and he he didn't want to do he didn't want to throw Daniel in the lion's den, and so he he went in the lion's den, and to paraphrase it to sum it all up, uh, the lions did not harm uh, Daniel. The lions did not harm Daniel. It says, uh, the angels of the Lord uh, shut the lion's mouths. And so, uh, where was that? My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt before as much as before him. Innocency was found in me. And also before you, O king, have I done no hurt. So he's describing the blamelessness of his lifestyle, his perfection. He had an excellent spirit. So he expressed that through his, his uh, faithfulness towards God. And Darius was pleased. So what happened to the men that accused him of it? The Lord dealt with them. The Lord, it says the Lord, the, it says uh, his, uh, the, where's that? I gotta find it. I gotta find that specific verse. God sent his angel. Let's see, you can't remember the book, man. Right here, in verse 24, praise God. It says, and the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel. This is what happens when you when you speak or try to manipulate the sons of God. God is a protector. He's a shield and buckler to those who serve him faithfully. Accused Daniel, they accused Daniel and they cast him into the den of lions. Them, their children and their wives and their lions had the mastery of them meaning they overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. This is what happens when you, you have to be very careful against the sons of God, those who, who are serving God faithfully, who are kings and priests. That's what we are. That's what the word of God says we are. We are kings and priests. We, we worship him. We meditate on his word day and night and this describes faithfulness and blamelessness. We have to be obedient, more importantly, obedient to the Lord. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love Jesus, you will obey him. If you don't, your actions will, that will say that you're not perfect. Your actions will, will say that you are not blameless. You're, and then you will come up with an excuse that says nobody's perfect. And so then King Darius wrote to all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed in his dominion, shall be even unto the end. He delivered and rescued and he worked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. That is a blameless life. They try to find fault in Daniel. They could not. And, that, and that's the same way with Joseph. Um, Potiphar's wife tried to come on to uh, Potiphar's, yeah, Potiphar's wife tried to come on to uh, Joseph and say in line with me. He wanted, she wanted Joseph to sleep with him. Joseph mentioned, I cannot do this, I'm paraphrasing, I cannot do this in the eyes of my God. Describing his blamelessness, describing his faithfulness and perfection towards God. And he fled. He fled from fornication. He fled from wickedness in the eyes of God. And then Potiphar's wife trying to blame Joseph for this, trying to lie to his to her husband, saying, uh, she, he, he tried to sleep with me. He tried to sleep with me. So accuser of the brethren. You see the devil in the activity of that matter? The devil is the accuser of the brethren. The devil is, will call it through sin, will cause you to falsely accuse. So falsely accuse. He did that. He did that through Potiphar's wife. 
He did that with the presidents and princes trying to get uh, Daniel thrown in the lion's den. Now, Jesus, this, this is the same matter with Jesus, who is perfect in thought, word, and deed, who is holy as the Lord God in heaven is holy. He also commanded us to be holy for the Lord God in heaven is holy. And holiness describes perfection. Holiness describes blameless. And you obey the Lord and faithful to the Lord, you are blameless. When we stand before God Almighty on that glorious day, we're going to be without spot and blemish. That describes blamelessness. It describes the righteousness of God through his people. And so we got to look at the gospel of Jesus Christ because when, you know, after Jesus got arrested, uh, the chief priests and elders were trying to set up false accusers. False accusers, they try to blame him for bad doctrine or her heretical doctrine. And so yet, I don't even know if they noticed it, but you falsely accuse your brethren. That is one of the six things the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination to him. Seven are an abomination to him. I'm looking at Mark. Let's see. Mark chapter 15. King of the Jews. They try to falsely accuse Jesus. Um, saying that, or right here in Mark chapter 14, it says, but he held his peace. Because they, after they, you know, they falsely accused him, it says he held his peace and answered nothing. Because when you are under pressure, when someone is trying to falsely accuse you of something, you want to acknowledge God. Even in your mind, you acknowledge God. Okay, Lord, I am being falsely accused about something. What is your will for me on this situation concerning this matter? The Lord will give you wisdom. The Lord will give you wisdom. And so, uh, Jesus said nothing. He answered nothing. And they marveled. But it stirred them up. It stirred them up because they was getting, I believe they was getting angry at Jesus. So in verse 62 of Mark chapter 14, uh, verse 61, I'm sorry. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus answered, he, you know, he, he answered because that's the truth of him. I am you, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and of coming in the clouds of heaven. So he prophesied that. He prophesied that. And that truth discouraged them. Yes, he said the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say in that hour. Yes, that's true. That is true, Sister Liberty. So it says, Jesus. By that truth he had, he did, he's spoken of and prophesied because it says in Revelation, Behold, he comes in the clouds and every eye will see him, even they that pierced him. All tribes, all tongues, or nations will well because of him, even so, amen. That truth stirred up the chief priests and elders. And so what did they say Out of, to falsely accuse him even more? Then... The high priest rent his clothes. He rented his clothes because of the truth of what Jesus said. He didn't say nothing when they falsely accused him. He was, he was blameless. He was blameless. What need we any further witnesses, they asked. You have heard the blasphemy. They, so they, they want to accuse him. They, was, they wanted to accuse him so bad that the truth that Jesus said was called blasphemy. How wicked the devil is. That's an example right there. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death for being perfect, for being blameless in thought, word, and deed. Because he said, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And so, and some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say with him, prophesy in the service, did strike him 
with the palms of their hands. And, and it goes on to Peter. But what was done to Jesus, he was falsely accused. They try to bring him before Pontius Pilate. And next to Pontius Pilate, there was also brought out a murderer of an insurrection. Um, Barabbas. Barabbas was a murderer. He was a robber. And so the chief priests, out of their pride, out of their, <coughs> out of their uh, hatred towards the Son of God, they stirred up the crowd. They stirred up the audience. They stirred up the crowd and they saw the murderer and they saw Jesus. And Pontius Pilate attempted to let Jesus go, but it wouldn't be, prophecy wouldn't be fulfilled to what the will of God is that Jesus did because the zeal of the Lord will perform it. And so the crowd was stirred up by the chief priests and elders and the Pharisees. Who do you want us to release? Barabbas the murderer or Jesus who is called the Christ? So the stirring up of the crowd by the chief priests said, free Barabbas. Pontius Pilate was like, who do you want us to release? What should we do with the with the king of the Jews or the or the the Jesus who is called Christ? Crucify him! Crucify him! They scream. They they said loudly, "Crucify him!" Who was perfect? Who was blameless? Who knew no sin? And then he was led to be scourged or severely afflicted. And so, this perfect man who is the God-man, who is God in the flesh, fully God, fully man, without sin, was scorched and severely afflicted, bruised, and which was also prophesied. He was bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our, chast uh, for our transgressions. Now check this out. The chastisement of our peace was laid on him. The chastisement, what was the chastisement of our peace? To blame, to falsely accuse, so the world, the world falsely accused Jesus, the princes and the presidents falsely accused Daniel, Potiphar's wife falsely accused Joseph. The chastisement of our peace was laid on Jesus. Same example, same example. They wanted peace. They wanted to rid, rid the Son of God. They wanted to because of. With the stirring up of the, the chief priests. Now, you see the devil at work. You see the devil at work in modern day time. What stirs you up to falsely accuse Jesus or hate Jesus? Music, ungodly movies. You have a rapper or a celebrity that, that you love. That stirs up your emotions. That stirs up your excitement. In ungodliness. In ungodliness. And then you love. That's why you love ungodly movies. That's why you love ungodly music. That's why you love to do evil. That's why you love to smoke marijuana. Or any other drug that is out. That I don't know of. That's what, what stirs you up to hate Jesus is the idols in your life. The, you know, you love the president in politics more than you love God. You don't, you don't love God enough to forsake the unrighteousness of the world. You have things in your life that you love because the wicked, the, the wicked hearts that needs to be changed. You need a blood transfusion by believing and be baptized. You need a blood transfusion by the blood of Jesus to cleanse you and wash you clean so you can be blameless and endure to the end in obedience. Just like Daniel who was faithful, just like Joseph who was faithful. You have these things in your life and it causes you in the eyes of God to hate him. You love things more than God. You love ungodly music more than God. You love ungodly movies more than God. 
And even in your thoughts are defiled because you love things. You love other things. And you have an excuse to say nobody's perfect, yet Jesus commanded to be perfect for the Lord your God in heaven is perfect. He's perfect. It's not a perfection that, oh, I'm just perfect. I don't do nothing wrong. No. You strive to enter in. You strive for perfection because Je that's what Jesus was talking about when he commanded it, to be perfect for the Lord your God in heaven is perfect. That's what he said. Uh, I like the way he said in Luke 6. I got to go there. I like the way he said this in Luke 6. This is, this is the doctrine to perfection. And let me see. Woe to the rich. You have woe unto you the rich. Oh, for you hungry. Woe unto you, all men. I like the way it says it here. And Jesus says, he says, Woe to you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. There was false prophets, prophets in uh, Jeremiah. Um, the book of Jeremiah. And the other prophets I can't think of right now. But my point is this, that this, this is another example of you Listening to liars, listening to those who will cause you to go astray, who will lead you to the broad way instead of the straight and narrow way. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life. You that be that find it. That's what it is. And verse 27, it says, but I say to you, which here love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. I'm trying to find this one verse. Where's that? Mm. It's here. Is here. Therefore, merciful. Be therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. No, that's not it. It's in here. For if you love them which love you, mm, that's not it. Here it is right here. Okay, here it is right here. It's in this cross reference between Matthew 7. In verse 43 of Luke 6, it says, For a good tree brings not forth corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit for every tree is known by his own fruit for of thorns men do not gather figs nor of the bramble bush gather they grapes now listen closely to this verse jesus says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good so what is the good treasure out of, a, out of his heart you to obey god to obey jesus and that describes perfection that is describing blamelessness, the same what you saw in Daniel, the same what you saw in Joseph, and definitely the same that you see in Jesus, who is perfect in thought, word, and deed. He says this, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So, how do you know when you are being manipulated? Out of the abundance of of the heart it speaks forth lies and when you are deceived you will know god will let you know when you're deceived god will let you know when you are manipulated and if you are found faithful blameless perfect god will protect you just like he did for daniel just like he did for joseph and jesus christ is the example we have to follow him and his instructions ask the lord to make your way straight before my face. You got to be transparent with the Lord. Make your way straight before my face. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life. Few that be to find it. So you find Jesus, you find life. It says that in Proverbs. He who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. That's what it says. He who finds me Referring to wisdom, because the spirit of wisdom is of the spirit of God. He who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. So, straight is the gate, narrow is the way. That's why John the Baptist says, make straight way for the Lord. Meaning, in preparation unto holiness to receive him as Lord. He is Lord God Almighty. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way. So, where I'm at. In verse 46, 
Now, this is the question that no professed uh, believer will ask themselves because Jesus asked, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Oh, I go to, oh, I'm saved because I go to church one time a week. Oh, I'm saved because I just read the Bible. Or oh, I'm saved because I was baptized at seven. But you do not do the things that Jesus says. You do not do the things that Jesus says. I'm going to say that again because it, ha it has to sink into your mind. Why you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. He commands you to repent. He calls all men to repent and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand and available for you. God gives you breath in your lungs to seek him. He breathes breath into your lungs to know, let you know that his attributes, his attributes are clearly seen. He's the creator of all things, heaven and earth. Fully God, fully man. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. So, in order to be blameless, in order to be faithful, you must believe that Jesus Christ is. And it's clearly in John 3. I, 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 think, I think I quoted this in the last video. I quoted this in the last video. John 3. Where it says, <laughs> you know, you got the, the famous John 3.16. In verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Now, this is, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. We are the children of light. We are the children of the day. We don't walk in darkness. We don't live in darkness. We don't think our eye, if our eye be single, our whole body will be full of light. We don't, we don't love darkness. This is the condemnation that light is come into the world. Men, it says, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds or their actions were evil. What makes you evil? Continue to be the falsely the, uh, the accuser of the brethren and be like your father the devil. Continue to manipulate. Continue to falsely accuse which is part of the six things the Lord hates yet seven are an abomination. Continue to do that. And see, when you stand before God, you will not get an account. Oh, nobody's perfect. That's your excuse. Nobody's perfect. Yes, Jesus is perfect. And he says, follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. And strive for perfection. That's why he commanded to be perfect for the Lord your God in heaven is perfect. That's what he means. Make the tree good and your fruit good. Forsake foolishness. Depart from evil. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.